There is this joke about Jordan Peterson that he is our internet dad and he's the dad that we wish that we'd had. And this is no understatement. Jordan Peterson changed my life and his ideas encouraged me to do the things that I otherwise wouldn't have the courage to. I have been listening to Jordan Peterson since 2017, but at the time, I listened to him merely for intellectual entertainment. I enjoy listening to him talk about ideas and politics and culture, but I never took what he said that seriously. And it changed in 2020. That year, I graduated from university with no jobs lined up. I broke off from a relationship that I thought was going to work. I was extremely disconnected with myself. I didn't know what I wanted. So no need to say I was fairly depressed and aimless. So I started to look for help on the internet and here I was watching his lecture series. I was so desperate for any meaning that I could grab onto. I remember watching his lecture series called The Maps of Meaning and being completely blown away by just how articulate and thoughtful and sharp and deep and empathetic he was. He has that particular way of talking about life and suffering and problems in a way that is very precise and non-cliche but also very hopeful. So at that time he was almost like an emotional self to my life crisis and slowly from that point onwards I started to feel better and take actions to improve my life. And in this video, I'll be sharing the five best lessons that I learned from Jordan Peterson that not only improved my thinking, but also changed the way that I live. Hopefully you will learn and enjoy this video and your life will benefit from this too. So the first lesson is the meaning of life is actually to improve the small things that we do every day. How about some friends that People kind of like that. How about an intimate relationship with someone that you can trust, that maybe has a future? That'd be good. How about a career that puts you in a dominance hierarchy somewhere, so at least you've got some possibility of rising, some possibility of stabilizing yourself, and a schedule and a routine, because no one can live without a routine. You need a career, you need something productive to do with your time, you need to regulate your use of drugs and alcohol, you need a family, like the family you have, your parents and all that, be nice if you all got along, you could work on that, that's a good thing to work on. And then, you know, you probably need children at some point, and that's life. That's what life is. And I know that people tend to think that any discussion related to the point of life, the meaning of all, oh, is kind of cliche and useless. But that's not true, because it is not about conjuring big ideas and reinventing the wheels. The meaning of life is to make meanings in the things that we do every day. And the things that we do every day all kind of fall into the same categories. And it include improving your mental and physical health, developing a career that hopefully take care of both you and your family, having fulfilling relationships, friendships, and engage in community and the world in a way that is engaging and productive. So in other words, you are asking yourself this very question. How am I going to spend my time in a way that is sustainable, meaningful and productive? And in China, we have this school system that encourages young people to think about their life purpose or their life goals in terms of studying, getting better grades, getting to university and out-competing other people. And I operated in this mode from the age of 6 to 18. And finally, after the university entrance exam, things fell apart. And I started to have this newfound freedom that I had no idea how to use it. So when I went to university, I really didn't know what I was meant to do. Like I lost the purpose for life because I had so much freedom. But I just had no idea, I had no structure to support how am I going to live? And that was the exact reason why things felt really difficult after I graduated because I've never actually invested any time to think about what I was going to do and what I wanted. And this advice from Jordan Peterson's really gave me a very clear structure in terms of how I want to structure my life in all of these five areas. And it also encouraged me to 
design my life with more intention how all of these things are going to pan out. I start to think about how to make better decisions and on what kind of things I want to seriously invest my time on. And I started to think with more intention about how am I going to make better decisions and on what kind of things I want to seriously invest my time in. And this gives me the confidence and the certainty to be at peace, not knowing everything, but also enjoying the journey of discovering. And the second lesson is to hone your words. Thinking makes you act effectively in the world. Thinking makes you win the battles you undertake. And those could be battles for good things. If you can think and speak and write, you are absolutely deadly. Nothing can get in your way. So that's why you learn to write. I started to write when I was young, but it was Jordan Peterson who made me really see the value of writing and being well-spoken. I have written several articles about how I felt about writing, links in the description box. I personally keep a journal in which I write and reflect every day. And I'm still learning a lot about who I am and what I wanted. But I can say I know what my insecurities are and where they come from. I know my triggers and I know what works and what didn't work for me. Writing helps us understand what we are and what we want and therefore effectively act in this world. And because of writing, I was able to speak up and negotiate for what I want. I was able to make tough decisions that I otherwise wouldn't have the confidence to. The reason that thinking your head can't replace writing is because when you think in your head, you can make little tweaks and think three incoherent thoughts at the same time. But when you're actually writing, it adds that layer of accountability that you can only choose that one point of view. It actually forces you to take a stance and make a decision about what you think. And by doing this for many times, you get to learn about what you think and how you think. It also encouraged me to think about wealth creation and entrepreneurship in this same way. Like from my observation, people that are the most influential and successful on YouTube, for example, are people who speak and present with a lot of flair. People like Jay Shetty, like Tim Ferriss, Ali Abdul, and it's just incredible to see how much clarity and details that they present with their ideas. It's, it's something to look up to. And the third lesson is clean up your room is the precondition before you can change the world. Say, well, if you were coming to see me for psychotherapy, the easiest thing for us to do first would just be to get you to organize your room. You think, well, is that psychotherapy? And the answer is, well, it depends on how you conceive the limits of your being. Start where you can start, you know? If, if something announces itself to you, which is a strange way of thinking about it, as in need of repair, that you could repair, then, hey, fix it. You fix a hundred things like that, your life will be a lot different. And people who don't like Jordan Peterson tend to take the piss out of this advice and say that this is just another cliche from the internet. But they seriously misunderstood it. What he means is that by doing small things, such as cleaning up your room, you actually develop the eyes and the skills to solve bigger problems. And if you think about it, when you clean up your room, it actually encourages you to think about organization and how to beautify the room, right? And then you have to learn about taste. While doing so, you might be living with somebody or a family who don't see eye to eye with you, who don't agree with your approach. And therefore you have to learn about how to negotiate and to influence them. And then you have to learn about communication skills and relationship skills. So from this perspective, this analogy can actually be many other small things like clean up your habits or start a journal, depending on who you are and what your goals are. Take me, for example, I have only been able to be a content creator and start my own business from this year. Even I have been wanting to have my own business for ages. And that was only because before that, I haven't had my life sorted out. I had so many bad habits that stopped me from taking action. I didn't have enough money. I wasn't financial savvy at all. I was even in a bad relationship with my family. And it was after me kind of sorting out all of these stuff that actually 
provided me with the system to create. Another example is after I decided to be more articulate and improve my writing, I keep a journal every day and just start by writing the most basic thoughts. And the more I write, the more I realized that I could do more advanced stuff. And I started to explore essays and articles and further down the line, I started to take masterclass and explore fictions. I didn't really start by doing the big things like exploring art and how I can write good fiction. And it was by doing the most simple thing that allows me to grow and explore further. And this is exactly the same with cleaning up your room because it gave you the confidence and the curiosity to step further and explore more out of your comfort zone. The fourth lesson is pursue what's meaningful, not what's expedient. Well, you should be afraid of taking risks and pursuing something meaningful, but you should be more afraid of staying where you are if it's making you miserable. It's like the first thing you want to do is dispense with the idea that you get to have any any permanent security outside of your ability to contend and adapt. The clock is ticking. Yeah, but and if you're miserable in your job now and you change nothing, in five years you'll be much more miserable and you'll be a lot older. I learned about this advice from his book 12 Rules for Life. And in chapter 7, he says, Life is characterized by suffering and therefore we must follow what is called upon by our conscience and abide by the highest of the ideals because pursuing what feels good and easy today can actually be a recipe for a disaster. And I think this is quite profound because when I think about how I apply this rule in my life, I think about the moments when I have made the toughest decision, doing the most difficult things like quitting university and moving to the UK, practice writing every single day for a year and quitting my job and pursue a creative career. These other things aren't the easiest to do but they are also the things that brought me the most fulfillment in my life. The meaning and the death that I experienced in those moments can never be compared with the pleasure that I got from food or sex or entertainment. And it's the same thing with going to the gym, like in the moment it can feel a lot of effort, but afterwards you get that really satisfying sensation that you are going to have a great body and be in good health condition. And there is this book called The Top 5 Regrets of the Dying, which was written by someone who cares for people who are sent to home to die, it says that the most common regrets that people have before they die is to not live a life that is the truest to themselves, but instead the life that is expected from other people. And I think there is something to that. It is always easy to do what requires the least effort and what feels convenient, but that doesn't mean that it is the decision that aligns with what is the best for you, or in other words, the highest good. So now I'll leave you to decide what your take on this will be. The last lesson is compare yourself with who you were yesterday, not someone else today. These people that you're comparing yourself to, you don't really know very well. You see their shiny outside, but you don't see the reality of their life. The ideal that you're observing that makes you jealous and resentful is in large part an illusion that's created by your own mind. Like many people, I have a harsh inner critic that watches me really closely and likes to criticize me for a lot of the things that I do. So take writing for example. When I write a first draft, uh, it will come out and say, oh no, 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 this is not good enough. You need to redo this again. This is not YouTube enough. That's a terrible start. Are you sure you know what you're doing? And in the same book, 12 Rules for Life, Jordan Peterson had a very comprehensive response to that. As the world become more connected, the examples that we can use to compare ourselves with are going to be paramount. But the thing is, the game that we are trying to get good at can contain a lot of things. A person can be playing the games of being a good mother, a good teacher, a good chef, a good public speaker, a good writer, a good homemaker at the same time. And if we are growing, which we should, there will always be a game 
in which V still sits at the lower part of the competence hierarchy. And so inner critics is only useful to the extent that it helps us to know where we can improve. But the problem is, most people like to compare themselves on that one particular skill that they're trying to get good at with someone who is already extraordinary at that skill. And they make that whole comparison about their worthiness and their whole identity. And in this mindset, it is easy to impose unrealistic standards on ourselves and it is not a pathway to sustainable, healthy personal growth. So to add on to this point, I want to read a quote from the book that I really, really enjoyed. So I'm gonna, going to read from my note. The present is eternally flawed, but where you start might not be as important as the direction you are heading. Perhaps happiness is always to be found in the journey uphill and not in the fleeting sense of satisfaction awaiting at the next peak. We all have our own unique set of strengths and weaknesses, and we all have our own unique set of problems that originate from a past that is personally unique to us. In this way, no one is the same, and therefore it would be unfair to compare anyone with anyone. The only person that could be compared with the current you is yourself yesterday, and that is a game that could be outplayed. This is the entire mindset that I use to look at my life and my work. And honestly, I've never been more at peace. So thank you, Jordan Peterson. So that will be all of the five best lessons that I've learned from Jordan Peterson. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm also super curious what you think of this topic. Do you resonate with something that I've said? Or do you agree or not agree with anything? Please, please let me know down in the comment section. It will mean the whole world to me. I will link all the resources mentioned in the description box. Thank you for tuning in and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.